How was Mother's Day in the Ploof household? <laughs> What's up, C. Rosie? You know, um, Saturday we did a little dinner with my mother-in-law and my mother. Um, had a good time there with the kids. And then yesterday was a nice little chill day, nice pool day. I, oh. I took took it upon myself to get up and make breakfast. I made lunch. I made dinner. We went in the pool. Just a really solid day, man. Okay. How about uh, you? How'd it go for you? It was good. We, um, you know, we had to wait until my 15-year-old woke up at about noon or whatever <laughs> to really get the festivities going. Uh, but we went on a nice hike. Uh, that's what uh, that's what Mrs. Nice. Rose wanted to do. Uh, we hung out in, in the Palisades. Got a little bite to eat, a little protein shake afterward. Wow. Ordered dinner in. It was just nice and relaxing. Took a jacuzzi last night. It was. Ooh. Hey now. Okay. Hey now. I like that. I was also in the jacuzzi yesterday, so we have that in common. We were not in the same jacuzzi though. Just no. so that every. I mean, we do. We live close to one another. So, but that not did yet. Not, happen. Not, not yet. yet. <laughs> not, not yet. All right, here we go. Hey, um, another weekend and another no hitter thrown in baseball. This time it was Wade Miley. So what's the bigger news, that the man who has been on seven different teams got his first no-no, or that my Cleveland Indians got no hit for the second time in less than a month? It's got to be the Cleveland Indians getting no hit for the second time in less than a month. I mean, it's very hard to do. I went, you know, my entire career, we got, I got no hit one time, and it was against Jared Weaver in Anaheim. Anybody that ever faced oh. Weaver in Anaheim knows he put those rocks in left center field himself because he used to throw out of those dang things. So it seems <laughs> like this is going to be the year of the no-hitter. I did a little bit of research on this. Mm -hmm. Seven is the modern-day record for no-hitters in a season. We already have four, five if you count mad bums. Mm -hmm. um, but can I read this little paragraph in this article that I read, and then I'll let sure. you go? Sure. Okay. Uh, the league's batting average of 234 is an all-time low. The yeah. strikeout rate – would set a new consecutive record, a new record for the 14th consecutive season. Yep. The current batting average on balls in play is 284. It's the lowest in more than 30 years. All that combined, man, that's the recipe for no hitter. So, seven, Chris, is the record. Are we going to break it? Do you believe that my Indians can set a record by being no hit three times in a yes, single like, season? Yes, I do believe that. Come on, Tribe. You could do this. You could pull it off. It's <laughs> unbelievable because I have a lot of friends from Cincinnati. That was my first uh, job market right after college. I still have guys that love to talk shit and text me and all sorts of stuff when the Indians and Reds play. So now they are one up on me big time. With all that being said, I want to give Wade Miley very quickly his just due. Former yeah. first rounder, pitched on seven different teams. You've heard nothing but amazing things like what a beloved teammate he is. He threw 114 pitches. He threw more that were 80 or slower than 90 or faster. He <laughs> threw 11 pitches that were 80 or lower, seven that were 90 or faster. That means the guy is tricking him. He, I know he throws that cutter. He throws a great changeup, but good for him, man, because if there was a guy you would pick, it wouldn't have been him. It's interesting that you, t you, you think about it now. I mean, maybe it's just the counter effect. Everybody's throwing so hard. Guys are geared mm -hmm. up to hit such velo. You, you get these guys that kind of just nibble and can change speeds and maybe a little bit below the hitting speed. There was a time, Chris, where Tampa Bay would have a knuckleball pitcher at every level in their organization because they felt like it messed uh -huh. the other team up after. And they were they were just experimenting with that. So maybe there's something, uh, something has to do with that, the speed differential, but uh, – Good for Wade. Yep, good for him. All right, let's move on to New York City. Biggest story to come out of Gotham this weekend. Was it that the Yanks and Mets combined to win five of six games? Was it the rat versus the raccoon? No, it was a possum story. Or that Jacob deGrom had to leave his start early on Sunday to get an MRI? It should be that the Yankees and the Mets won all those games. But it's not. And deGrom, by all accounts, is supposed to be okay. I don't even think he's – going to miss a start is that what they're saying i read that this morning right they feel it's pointed in the right direction it does it gives me a little concern right because we yeah. talked about him on the ig show last tuesday and they had to push his start he was scratched hours later and with his build and with the velocity that he throws it, it like it was always like chris sale for me although it's not as herky jerky as sales motion like mm -hmm. for a while because of their build 
and the way they threw the baseball, it scared the hell out of me all the time. And I know DeGrom's got perfect mechanics. But yes. still, because he's 6'4 and 180 dripping wet, <laughs> like at any point it feels like he could break. Yeah, no, I agree. You know, I, I hope he's okay. The The whole rat awesome thing, I think every single side screwed that up. I think Lindor and McNeil, you know. Wait, should why? Have just... <laughs> what they, should have been, they should have been honest about it from the get-go. But clearly, look, this is something that happened in the clubhouse. They wanted to keep it in the clubhouse. So they concocted a story. And But the media, you know, they get the story. They're mad that they're telling them this story. And they turn it into a big deal. Okay, then they act like it's Lindor's fault for it blowing up. Like the media did this. They clearly didn't want to talk about it, but then they kept pressing. And then they go to Luis Rojas and they go to the GM and ask him. They won't let it. They won't let the story die. And it's uh -huh. not that interesting of a story. Two teammates got mad at each other. They went in the tunnel, which is where they're supposed to go. They hashed it out and that was it. But, you know, because they had the rat and the possum story and, and then it's New York media, it becomes this big frenzy when it really shouldn't have been. Hey, how often does that happen? This, but not rats versus possums versus whatever. I'm talking about fights. How often does it happen? You know, it happens. It doesn't happen all the time. But you think about how often you're around these guys. You are, when you're in the baseball season, you're around your teammates way more than you're around your family. You're at the ballpark right. a lot. And it's, it's, you know, 26 to 30 dudes together all the time. And these are guys that are very competitive and – you know, there's a lot at stake. So obviously emotions and tempers run sometimes. It's, it's, okay. it's, it just happens and it's never that big of a deal. Did you ever get in one? Uh, you know, not like a pushing or, a, um, uh, you know, any physical altercation, but definitely some shouting matches for sure. Give me a good one in 20 seconds. I don't want to. <laughs> oh God almighty. You are still in the clubhouse, bro. Unbelievable. No, I, I just don't wanted know. one little I, I, I honestly, up the top of my head, I couldn't even give you one. Maybe, I think I yelled at Brandon Kinsler one time, who's still playing. Oh. Him and I got into it a little bit, but nothing nothing crazy. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Offline. All right. Whatever. Uh, let's move on to more interesting story. That the Boston Red Sox now six weeks in have baseball's best record, or that the defending World Series champs are limping right around 500. I think they're both really interesting stories. They keep getting more and more interesting to me. Give me one. I'm going to go with the Red Sox because I think the Dodgers are going to be fine. The Red Sox just finished a very easy part of their schedule. Well, tonight. They play the Orioles one more time tonight. And then they go into a very, very tough part of the schedule. Well, I think I went through it. And they don't play a team that's like a bad baseball team mm -hmm. until August 3rd. And that's Detroit. So they have – they. we're going to see if the Red Sox yes, are – we are. We're going to see if they're legit, and I hope they are. I hope they go out and they prove everybody wrong because what they've been doing so far has been a lot of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. um, but they have been doing it in, in, during a, or at a point of the season where I think their schedule is pretty soft. Um, they had a bunch of games against the Orioles, I think nine total games against the Orioles, ten after tonight. So we're going to see, and I hope they prove people wrong. They continue to do that. I told you I'd have to wait until after June because their June schedule is a bitch. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but good for them. You know, they're hitting – they lead the league in, in batting average, and it's not close. They lead the league in OPS, and it's not close. Yeah. Uh, J.D. Martinez seems all the way back. Xander Bogarts is one of the most underrated players in baseball that we never really mention at a national level for some stupid reason, probably because I'm an idiot. Um, and then Rafael Devers – has been great as well. So they're, you know, their pitching's been okay. Their bullpen's been really good. Matt Barnes has been exceptional. So I want to wait through June. Real quickly on the Dodgers. They've dropped five straight series. They've lost as many games through 35 tries this year as they did through 60 all of last season. They're off. And Bauer, I loved Bauer's press conference yesterday. I loved it. He was like, I came here to win, and we're not winning, and not winning sucks. I liked it. I thought it was really good. Yeah, I'm looking at their um, their home road splits. They've only played they've only played 13 games in home and 22 on the road. They've been. Uh, I think that has some. I mean, that's that's something. It's not nothing. No, it's if not nothing. At, if you look at their stats, like they're still they're right behind the Red Sox in OPS. Right. right. No, I did notice like, that. I I think they're gonna be fine, and I'm glad we. This is the time 
where you're happy we're playing 162. The, 162 totally. really lets the cream rise to the top. Absolutely. And one other note on the Red Sox, by the way, which is kind of quirky because you think, God, they have such a huge advantage at home. I think they're one game over 500 at home, and I think they're like 12 and four yes, on the road. They've been killing so, it on the road. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, cooler Mother's Day story that the mom of Yuli and Lourdes Guriel flew to Houston and got to see two sons play against each other on Mother's Day weekend, or Kevin Biggio returned back to the city where he grew up, hit a homer with his mom in attendance against the team his dad became a Hall of Famer for. <laughs> I love both the stories, Chris. Stop doing this to me. I'm going to go with the Guriel mom because she's got two kids out there. I know. I love, I love the split jerseys. I love when that mm -hmm. happens, whether it's, you know, I think it was like AJ Hawk and somebody else when the girlfriend and was it Brady Quinn? Brady Quinn, yes. The split, I love that. And now she had the Astros Blue Jays split jersey. Unfortunately, the Guriel boys didn't really show up for mom. I think they want to combine one for six during the day. So shame on them. But I think what a cool moment for mom to on Mother's Day that they're playing each other. She got to go see it. Um, so I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah, you talk about the split jersey. There was actually two punter Colquitts in the NFL that were playing one another. And so she had a split punter jersey. <laughs> I love that. And, and by the way, dad was the punter on those great Steelers teams in the 70s as well. Just drop a little sports knowledge. There it is, okay. Uh, so I had to go to my bride and ask her which one would be cooler. And she's like, are you kidding me? You know, if Brady were to hit a home run, <laughs> you know, in L.A. to come back, like, how awesome is that? I said, but hold on. What if Josh and Brady played against each other on Mother's Day? She goes, ooh, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the So <laughs> there we go. I had to go to her to defer, and that's my answer, and I'm sticking with it. Who someone right. that just mentioned this, uh, the Seeger's mom having the split jersey. Great. Love good that. one. Love that. That's a, that's a good one. And I loved it when they, I think they both went deep actually in a game, but the thing that, that makes it different here is that it was mother's day weekend. Yes. Which yes. I think is awesome. Last one. We know that Jake sucks. Yes. We've got that, but he didn't this weekend because he broke big time baseball news. He was the first one to say Shane Green is going back to the Atlanta Braves. But is that bigger than the way that the Arizona Diamondbacks rolled out the red carpet for him when they were in town to play the Mets? He read their starting lineup on their social media. You know, he and Tori Lavello are like best buds now. So what's the bigger story? I don't know. <laughs> Jake had a weekend. I love that, you know. He He's just one of those people that when you hang with them for a little bit, you like them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the Diamondbacks thing, that was something that just happened randomly. They, the the D-backs social media team was always in our chat and then mm -hmm. relationship. And then before you know it, they renamed their Twitter handle Talking Snakes. And they put in their profile a Talking Jake fan account. Like, that just doesn't happen, dude. Like this, I know we're living in the new media age. Social media has taken over, but like, you've never, I've never seen a media member get that kind of treatment from a team. Are you kidding me? We cover the whole league. He's a Yankees fan, but the Diamondbacks, you know, they made him a part of the organization. I for know. Him. I think it was so cool, man. So I think that's the bigger, that's the bigger one. So in my in my time working in Major League Baseball, uh, the Arizona Diamondbacks are are one of the best. Uh, as far as communicative mm -hmm. skills and they have a great PR department and they have a ton of fun. Their social media is, is one of the best in the league, all that sort of stuff. With that being said, I'm going to have to get at somebody in that organization, man. <laughs> I mean, really, we're going to treat Jake like that. We're not going to hear the end of it here at John boy media no. ever. I mean, you know, we're, we're, what's going to happen to the sales of our Jake sucks hats. Really guys. Yeah. I mean, they're going to have to put one out that says Jake doesn't suck. Right. In fact, we love Jake hats. They're going to be flying off the shelf. Oh, no, we can never let that happen. We got to keep the guy humble. We can't. That's the one thing I said is we can't let Jake get a big head. It's already big enough, you know, but metaphorically Physically. speaking. Yeah. Physically, it's like bochi like. It's very <laughs> large for a, for a guy who's about four foot eight. All right, uh, before we go, what do you have coming up on John Boy Media? I'm going to run right outside right now to do our series recap. And then mm -hmm. I got a sequence coming up tomorrow. Uh, all the good stuff, man. What about you? 
So the latest Tyler Glass Now episode just dropped today. It is extra special because we surprise him with his mom, not only for Mother's Day, but because they ended up on TMZ because he, you know, he swears so much while he's on the mound and she texted him about it and that story broke. So mm-hmm. we really got to the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. Plus Evan Longoria, your buddy of the San Francisco Giants joins us uh, while driving in a car. Don't worry, he's not driving. His bride is. And um, so we cover a lot of ground about his days in Tampa, how hard it was to leave, how tough it's been for him the last few years and how he's kind of stayed in the game mentally when he hasn't put up the numbers that he wants to. And now he is in 2021. Mm-hmm. So a lot, a lot of good stuff. A um, couple things in the chat real quick. People are like, how do we get your Rose gear? Yeah, I, I should be wearing my Chris Rose rotation t-shirts. Those are available at johnboymedia.com. And somebody said, why don't you talk about the St. Louis Cardinals? We talked about them last week. I'm sure we're going to talk about them again. So, Cole, don't worry. We'll get to them as well. Yeah, so get you know. clarity with the homer. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to bring that up yeah. to Giolito when I uh, – when I, man, oh, man. That's, I think it was like 421 or something. It was deep. 106 exit velo. Like, he, he, I talked to him about it. He was happy about it for sure. Yeah, nice. So go check out everything. We've got Talking Baseball coming out later today. The Chris Rose Rotation new episode is dropped. And we will see you here each and every day, 1130 Eastern, 830 Pacific, to get you all set for the day in baseball. All right, Ploof, have a good day. Hit the jacuzzi after your show, okay? I want you feeling good for tomorrow. I will, okay? man. All right, Rosie. All right, peace, <laughs> everybody. See you guys.